Good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Alok Sharma is Professor and Head of Department of Neurosurgery at Lokmanya Tilak Medical College, Cyan Hospital. He is Director of Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute, Navi Mumbai. He is Consultant Neurosurgeon at Fortis Hospital, Mulun. He obtained his MBBS, MS and MCH from the State GS Medical College and KM Hospital, Mumbai. He has authored 16 books contributed chapters to many textbooks and has over 150 scientific publications to his credit. He has received numerous awards during his career like the Shushrut Award and Bharat Gaurav Award. He is the founder president of the Stem Cell Society of India. He has specialized in stem cell treatment for incurable neurological disorders like autism, cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, spinal cord injury, stroke, etc. Today, he will deliver Dr. B.S. Pense memorial oration on anti-aging, integrative and regenerative therapies. Dr. B.S. Pense memorial oration, he was a leading family physician and a founder member of IMA Mumbai branch. He was the president of IMA Mumbai branch in the year 1971-72. I invite Dr. Alok Sharma for his oration. Good afternoon, friends and colleagues. Uh, thank you so much, Chairperson Ma'am, for your very warm welcome. Uh, it's a privilege, a pleasure, and an honor to be delivering the Dr. B.S. Painsey Memorial Oration uh, for the IMA an organization that I'm extremely close to over the last several years. Uh, today, we were going to talk about aging. Aging is something that we are all aware of, but we choose not to look at it because we don't want to look at it. All right. We have concepts of aging, and the concepts of aging are external. But I'm here to share what modern research and what new technologies have to offer in the field of aging. As doctors, we are all aware of age-related disorders. So I'm going to talk, my talk will be in three parts. The first part will be the biology of aging and what are the principles of anti-aging. We'll talk a little bit about integrative therapies and then we'll talk a little bit about regenerative therapies. So first, the biology of aging. What is new? Why am I here taking this talk? The first thing is that now it is possible through a simple blood test to monitor aging. There is a test called the telomere test. And with that, it tells you exactly what your cellular age is, not your birth age. In other words, it's almost possible to predict now what your normal lifespan will be if you don't have any other illness. But what's the use of knowing what your cellular age is if you can't correct it? So now, there are simple, non-invasive medical technologies which not only slow down, but actually reverse the aging process. So that is what is new. So the definition of anti-aging medicine is to prevent the preventable and to delay the inevitable. Death is inevitable, so can we delay it? And things like cancer, brain stroke, cardiac, they are preventable, so can we prevent it? So the de other definition of anti-aging medicine, it's a medical speciality which is founded on the application of advanced scientific and medical technologies. This is very important for early detection, prevention, reversal, and treatment of age-related dysfunction, disorders, and disease. These, these, this is very important. Disease never just happens. Before a disease, there is a disorder, and before a disorder, there is a dysfunction. Can we pick up things at the dysfunction level so it doesn't lead to a disorder or a disease? So the purpose of anti-aging is not just longevity. There is no point living long if you, don't, if you don't have health. And health is not having a disease, but also quality of life, performance. So these are the three pillars of anti-aging medicine. It is required at a cellular level to improve cell membrane health, receptor health, hormone, neurotransmitter, mitochondrial, and gene health. Now, it's very important to remember that whatever happens to us starts within the cell. Everything, every disease, every disorder starts within the cell. We are so focused on the symptoms and what's happening outside, 
we don't get that it all starts in the cell. But our cells do not have the autonomy to make creative decisions. Our cells simply collect data from the surrounding and respond to it. <coughs> so if you mo modulate or modify the surroundings, you can modify what's happening within the cell. And we'll look at that shortly. So now we look at aging at a cellular level. Now, this is a talk all by itself. What happens at the cellular level? I can talk for a couple of hours on this because there is so much happening, right from telomeres to what's happening uh, with, with proteo, uh, proteostasis, what's happening with nutrient sensing, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular sentence, stem cell uh, exhaustion, etc. So there is a lot happening at the cellular level. And this is uh, the key factors of aging, the mitochondria, proteins, inflammation, hormonal in in disbalance, oxidative stress, microcirculation issues, hypoxia, lactate production, stress hormones, glucose insulin regulation, growth factors, immune dysfunction, environment, burden, individuality. So aging and disease occurs when there's a downward spiral of all of these. So there are two types of aging. There's pathological aging and physiological aging. Pathological aging is when you have all the diseases that you can see listed there. And physiological aging is when you just decline in function. But in a nutshell, let me tell you one thing. Aging happens when your children, you have protein synthesis, lots of it, and no inflammation. As you age, protein synthesis comes down and inflammation increases. <coughs> so the fundamental of aging is inflammation. Now we look at telomeres. So this is now central. The whole field of anti-aging has taken on a new dimension because of the availability and understanding of telomeres. What are telomeres? Telomeres are basically DNA protein at the tip. What you see here in red, our chromosomes are these X-shaped things. And at the tip, we have a DNA protein complex called telomere. This protects the chromosomes when, the, when there is division. As the telomeres become shorter, cells age and die. So by measuring the size of the telomeres, which we can now do through a simple blood test, you can actually know what your cellular age is. So with age, telomeres decrease, and this corresponds exactly to your cellular age. Now, shorter telomere length is associated with all these conditions, premature death, cancers, cardiovascular disease, vascular dementia, obesity, stroke. All this has got, all these are concerned with smaller telomere length. So as you can see, on the left, you have, that's the normal long telomere. And you can see on the right side, all these conditions result in shorter telomeres. But there's good news here. Our telomeres tell us that human beings can live up to 120. Our telomeres have been designed to live, to survive up to 120 years. And so the person, the longest living person, was uh, this lady from France, Jean Calment, who lived up to 122 years. So that's what's possible. Beyond that is not possible. So now that was the biology of aging. Now let's look at integrative therapies. So these are two clinical studies that influenced me deeply and made me look. I'm a neurosurgeon primarily. I'm a neurosurgeon. I, I specialize in regenerative medicine. But as part of this, these two studies actually influenced my thinking. And we decided that this is a subject worth focusing on. One was a study by Dean Ornish uh, on the effect of lifestyle changes on telomeres, uh, which was from the US. And the second was from Efrati on the effect of hyperbaric oxygen on telomeres and aging. So uh, the first study, uh, this is the paper published study. What he did was he took two groups. One group, they continued the same activity, uh, the 25, uh, that is 25 patients, no change in lifestyle. And in the intervention group, there were only these interventions. They shifted to a plant-based diet. They had 30 minutes of walking. They had yoga and meditation. And a, once a week, a social session. Just look at this, how simple this is. Plant-based diet, exercise, 30-minute exercise, yoga, meditation, and social support. So this was one group. Now see the difference. The group which followed this, the telomeres increased in size. Telomeres never increase in size. And in the control group, the telomeres decreased in size as they do normally with all of us. All our telomeres are decreasing. So just with four things, a vegetarian diet, exercise, yoga, meditation, and once a week social activity, the telomeres reversed. This had never been seen in medicine before. But this took five years. So this was, a, you know, the, this evaluation was done at the end of five years. But the second study, the use of hyperbaric oxygen, uh, this is again published. 
uh, what they did is they took 34 or 5 individuals, 64 and above, and gave them 60 hyperbaric sessions. And they found in all of these that you can see the blue is before. In all of them, there was a, up to a significant increase in telomere size. So two studies, one over five years, simple lifestyle changes, telomeres increase. The other, 60 sessions of hyperbaric oxygen, you get the same result. Now there are some other publications, you know, that shows, for example, this publication shows the effect of yoga on uh, leukocyte telomere length and showed that uh, telomere is better preserved in people who practice yoga. This is another paper which showed that exercise improves telomeres. And this shows that those who shifted to legumes, nuts, seaweed, fruits, and dairy products, they had longer telomere length. And there are negative studies. Those who have a lot of sugar, their telomere size, who had a lot of sugar and sweetened food, telomere size reduced. Those who had a lot of alcohol, telomere size reduced. Those who had depression, telomere size reduced. So th this is published paper. This is not philosophy or spirituality. This is science. Yoga, exercise, diet, and hyperbaric oxygen increases your telomeres. OK, that means it delays you know, uh, your eventual death. And sugar, alcohol, depression, it does the reverse. Now, this is a study I did on myself. All right, I conducted the effect of uh, after I read the hyperbaric paper. So two years ago, I did, I, I, was, I was 60 years old. That is, this, I did this two years ago. And when I did my telomeres, it showed me to be 85 years. I was shocked. You know, I'm 60, I thought I was young, and my telomeres show I'm 85. So I decided to do hyperbaric. This is me in the hyperbaric chamber. We have, uh, we actually had one that time, now we have three of them. Then after 40 days of continuous hyperbaric, my biological age reduced to 70. 10 years more of life, uh, but 70 is still old. It was 10 years older. Then I did, I did more sessions, but this time I did alternate days, 20 sessions, and now it reduced to 65. Uh, and uh, then I just followed up myself and it reduced to 60. So this is the graphic. I was 85 on day zero. I do four, uh, 40 sessions of hyperbaric. My cellular age comes to 70. I do uh, 20 more, my cellular age comes to 65. I stop it and I watch to see whether the improvement continues. And now I'm my same age. My biological age is the same as my cellular age. This is a study done on me. Uh, in fact, the, you know, the lab between 85 and 70 refused to issue the report. They said, there is, we have never seen such a dramatic uh, uh, you know, reduction in 40. We don't believe this is your blood. So the lab refused to issue the report because they had never seen only 40 sessions of hyperbaric. Then, but 40 sessions is too much. So we evolved a one-week comprehensive anti-aging program. Uh, this is our study, 26 people, 17 females, 9 males, 40 to 85 years. We do a detailed evaluation, a one-week program. There's a clinical assessment, biochemical markers. We do telomere testing and cardio test screening. This is the cardio test screening. It's, uh, it shows a lot of things, you know, fatigue index, electrocardiac stability, the balance between the autonomic and sympathetic nervous system, physical stress, mental stress. So it's a very interesting uh, way of evaluating. And you can actually see your type. You see microcirculation, how it is. Uh, and what everybody was given, we call it a 360-degree approach. 10 sessions of hyperbaric, 7 sessions of ozone therapy, gut cleansing, acupressure, deep tissue mobilization, uh, intravenous, high-dose vitamins, etc. And that's the detail. You can see that's a 7-day program. You're, you know, you're busy from morning 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. There's multiple things happening, uh, you know, from yoga and, you know, deep tissue mobilization to weight loss to cosmetology to hyperbaric to ozone. So it's a complete full seven-day program. And these are the results. Muscle pain improved in 100%. Joint pain improved. Gut issues improved. Loss of appetite improved. Urinary incontinence improved. Dyspnea improved. All in 80 90%. Energy levels improved. Skin elasticity was better. Varicose veins improved. Uh, memory, anxiety, depression, mood swings, sleep issues, palpitations. So symptomatically, higher function, a lot of improvement. Uh, and this data was statistically all significant. Uh, then biochemical, you know, the, there was an improvement in the hemoglobin, in the fasting blood sugar, in the postprandial sugar, in the ESR, in the CRP, 100%. All the, all the people improved in the CRP. The creat improved. And uh, now here, uh, I don't know if you can see it. So. On the left is the actual age, that's 85. The first person is actually my mother. She was 85. When we did a biological testing, we found she was 89. After one week of treatment, we reduced her cellular age to 88. Well, I give my mother one year more of life, and I don't think I can do anything better than that, apart from the improved quality of life. 
But uh, lower down, you can see the other gentleman, 81, his biological age was 96. It reduced to 90, a six-year improvement. Uh, eight year, and, and one, you know, patient five didn't improve at all. Uh, interestingly, she had Parkinson's disease, so she actually had a disease and she didn't improve at all. So what you can see there is the cellular improvement after one week of therapy. This is just one week, all right? <coughs> and uh, this is just all the same, all the patients. You can see one actually had a 70. So the younger the patient, the better. A 50-year-old gentleman, number 11, 78, and you can see improvement by 17 years. And this is just to show you in the graphic data in the 80 and above, in the between 60 and 79 years, and between 40 to 59 years, what the improvement was. The blue is the actual age, the red is the cellular age before the one-week treatment, and the green is the cellular age after the one-week treatment. Everybody except one improved. And this is just to show you the other, how we monitor. So there is a microcirculation evaluation. Uh, this gentleman was type 4. You can see type 4, there is a lot of, you know, uh, calcification within. And at the end of one week, you can see it is reduced to type 2. So the microcirculation actually improves. Now we come to uh, integrative medicine. So this is what we do. It's like a combination of uh, various things. I'll just run through it fast. Uh, so we use hyperbaric oxygen, like I told you, which is 100% oxygen given at more than uh, atmospheric pressure. What hyperbaric oxygen does, see, normally, we are now breathing oxygen at one atmosphere. At one atmosphere, only the hemoglobin in our RBCs carries oxygen. But when you give hyperbaric oxygen at more than one pressure, the plasma starts carrying oxygen. So the entire plasma is flush with oxygen. So plasma reaches more at a microcircuitry level than RBC. So that is how hyperbaric works. It does a whole lot of things from improving oxygenation, improving metabolism, working on the immunity, and increasing energy levels. Apart from hyperbaric, we use ozone therapy. Ozone is actually O3. It's super activated um, oxygen. It acts as an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anticoagulant, a germicide. And uh, it's, it's very simple. This is very inexpensive. You just need an oxygen cylinder. You have a small little machine. You connect it. It converts oxygen to ozone. Uh, and it, it has all these actions by reducing inflammation, improving gut health, anticoagulant effects, oxygenation of the body and the brain. So these are the benefits. It can be, you can breathe it, you can give it through the ear. There's an ozone suona. It can also be given IV. Uh, these are a couple of studies we did on ozone in COVID-19. Uh, when we were, our hospital was converted to a COVID hospital, and this is our published work on um, <coughs> COVID and ozone. Uh, we did a registered clinical trial first to show the safety and efficacy. There were no adverse events, a lot of improvement in symptoms. You can see all these parameters, markers of oxygenation improved. Um, again, you can see there was a decline in all the inflammatory bio ma biochemical marker levels. Uh, this is our second paper. This is a paper where our healthcare workers, when we became a COVID hospital, they were given a choice before to take ozone as a prophylactic. So 64 took it, 117 did not. And look at the data. Amongst those who received ozone, only 4.6 became positive. Among those who did not take ozone, 14% became positive. So this is just that data. Then we did a comparative study. 254 patients received IV ozone with regular treatment. 300 received only standard treatment. And uh, the bed, there were everything, the duration of stay, duration of oxygen, <coughs> ICU stay, recovery, mortality, everything was better in the ozone group. We've uh, published two books, one for family physicians, another on cytokine storm, and I've edited another book for the municipal corporation. These books are available. We, we, they are distributed without any cost, and uh, they are available at a stall outside. Then gut cleansing, hydrocolon therapy. This is, again, something we neglect. Our gut is the center of a whole lot of uh, medical problems, which we haven't recognized uh, as, as much. So gut cleansing is a very important part, and <coughs> I like to show this video just to, to explain to you why gut cleansing is important. Okay, so people just know of enemas, but enemas only clear the sigmoid colon. This machine that we have at our wellness facility flushes water all the way, the ascending transverse and descending colon, and flushes everything out. What this does is it completely, you know, hits a refresh button to all the bacteria and all the microbes that are there in the gut. Uh, I know it looks difficult, but it's not that much, and you feel amazing. I mean, the way you feel after you've had your large intestine clean is something else. It's a very simple machine, it's painless, and it's something which I believe all of us should do. 
Uh, then there is the use of infrared sauna. Then there is acupressure, deep tissue mobilization. Uh, there is whole body cryotherapy. These are all tools that we use in anti-aging. Uh, then we have this machine to improve microcirculation. You know, you just put your hand here in the machine and it heats the blood and you have heated blood going all through your system. We use micronutrient therapy. You know, we identify first what the deficiencies are. And one of the things we find surprisingly neglected is vitamin D. Almost everybody we have have very low levels of vitamin D. Uh, hormone therapy is again extremely important and we, we, we evaluate and we replace if required of which cortisol and testosterone are very neglected and they play a very important role in anti-aging. Then there is of course an anti-aging weight loss. We have a whole lot of machines including cool sculpting. There's anti-aging medical cosmetology uh, if required. And this is our facility. The anti-aging facility is located in Navi Mumbai. All the treatments I showed you all are available in one place under one roof. Uh, there are some natural anti-aging measures which are very important more than all of this. That's diet, intermittent fasting, exercise, where again, it's not just exercise. The type, the duration, intensity, everything matters. Sleep optimization, sun exposure, and social interactions. Uh, lastly, very quickly, I'll run through regenerative medicine. So once something is gone from dysfunction, disorder, to disease, now you may need, uh, now you may need uh, you know, actual treatment for your disorder. So you have the use of stem cells. Stem cells are cells which have the ability to convert into other types of cells. They repair, replace, and regenerate. The quality of a stem cell is that it replicates itself and can become any other tissue of the body. So depending on where you put it. So that is the ability of stem cells, to become itself and to differentiate into other cell types. They have a paracrine effect, release growth factors. They cause angiogenesis. And there are different types of uh, stem cells. We don't use embryonic umbilical cord. We use adult stem cells. Take from the bone patient, put it back in the patient. So this autologous transplantation, and now there is, there is a new law in the country that says autologous transplantation is a separate process, not a product. And it doesn't have to go through the uh, FDA regulatory process. Our own CDSU says that. So it's very simple. There's a three-step process. You do a bone marrow aspiration. Uh, you separate from the bone marrow the cells, and we inject it intrathecally. Uh, the Nobel Prize in Medicine has been given three times in 1990, 2007, and 2012 to uh, stem cell research. So for aging, it is useful in brain disorders, dementia, and ataxia. In brain stroke, you can see our results. This is 47 patients, 77% showed an improvement. Here the scan, above the blue you can see, that is the ischemic area, and below you can see the improvement after cell therapy. And our work is all published. Uh, this is a, a, a case series, and we have six other papers. In dementia, it's also very useful. And you can see 70% uh, of the patients improved, 30% did not. And you can see in the scan, above the blue area is the hypometabolic, and you can see after stem cells below, uh, there is an improvement there. Again, this is published. Then cerebral ataxia again, 91 patients. Again, you can see over 90% patients have improved. You can see in the scan before, on the left side, blue, hypermetabolic, and on the right side, uh, you know, this improvement. Again, this work is published. There are two diseases that mimic aging. One is motor neuron disease, where within five years, people actually age 50 years. There is a 90% mortality uh, at the end of five years. And muscular dystrophy, where all the boys die at 20. So I call this accelerated aging. There also it works in motor neuron disease. This is a control study. And you can see, this is published in the American Journal of Stem Cells. In the green, you can see the uh, patients who didn't take the treatment, they deteriorated, there was a high mortality. In the blue is uh, the patients who, who took the treatment and had a better result. And we have nine papers on that. Muscular dystrophy, again, a control study, you can see that uh, you know, there is a difference between the untreated patients who deteriorated and the treated patients. Uh, the treated patients stabilize. So there's a dramatic difference in the control group. And here, there's objective evidence. Above, you can see the MRI. You can see it's all white. The muscle is gone. It's become fat. And below, you can see recovery. Again, EMG above showing, showing uh, you know, decreased contractions. Below, after stem cell, it is improved. We have 18 papers on muscular dystrophy and cell therapy. It also works in several other conditions, like neurodevelopmental conditions, neurotrauma, COVID. Uh, we have treated over 3,000 patients of autism with a 90% success rate. You can see before and after, dramatic improvement in brain function. Cerebral palsy, 1,600 patients. Before and after, you can see the improvement in spinal cord injury, 800 patients treated. Uh, and you can see the publication below, five publications, three in head injury. 
We did in stem cell a clinical trial, and there again we showed, this was the FDA approved trial, significant improvement using stem cells in COVID. A total of 103 papers, 12 books. We have three books on COVID, and there are two books written for family physicians. Both are available outside. And I'm very fortunate that in one of the books I have written, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has written an introduction. It is such an honor that you have Sri Narendra Modi ji writing an introduction for a book that I have written. He's never written for anybody else. And this is myself presenting him a copy of that book. So these are, that, that's, I've just, this is the end. This is a recommendation from the US, 100 doctors from the US uh, who looked at this a disease prevention study. There is nothing here that you don't know. Believe in something good, focus on a higher purpose, find meaning in your life, develop a unique potential, choose work that is important, balance in your life, manage stress, maintain meaningful social interactions, love the people you are with, stay positive, have a family doctor who helps you to stay healthy, eat less, avoid harmful intake, exercise more, develop healthy but fun-filled habits, have eight hours of sleep, have fun. It took them for three years to put this together, but we know all this. So the principles of anti-aging, I like to use this slide, it's one of my favorite slides, as learned from dolphins. Eat simple, be at peace and be accepting, exercise regularly, play and have fun, dance and feel good about life, have love in your life. And so my final conclusions are, from the study, lifestyle changes such as diet, activity, stress management, reverse aging at a telomere level. But if you already have a disorder, then hyperbaric oxygen, ozone therapy, and micronutrients can help. And if it becomes a disease, then you need regenerative medicine through cell therapy. I like to quote this quote from Kabir. He said, Dukh mein sumiran sab kare, sukh mein kare na koi. Jo sukh mein sumiran kare, use dukh kahe ko hoi. So, you know, why you, you wait, we go to a doctor when we are ill. What if we did preventive things? Then you would not fall ill. So, thank you for attention. Thank you, Dr. Alok Sharma for a nice to deliver anti-aging. Uh, always keep charm same cheers for advancing years. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Now I invite our president, Dr. Anil Award, and chairperson to felicitate the speaker, Dr. Alok Sharma. Lucky day winner, Dr. Jayari Parekh. Dr. Jayari. Please raise your hand. Dr. Jai Masrani. <laughs>